previous presentations, we have emphasized that as legacy of the colonial past, Anglo-American West in collaboration with the elites of the poor countries with spatial reference to India and South Asia, maintain tight stranglehold on banking, education, mainstream media, industrial complex, etc. Thereby influence economy of India come all former colonial countries. West has established and maintained a very effective and steady system of siphoning out resources, which is estimated to be in excess of a trillion dollar. And it is, this drainage is in each year. International economics and politics revolve around this diabolical relationship between East and the West. Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, has made desperate appeal to this effect in several international forums, including the UN, in the UN General Assembly, pleading international agencies to take a stand against this organized siphoning of resources that is intensifying the process of pauperization. One of the most important tools for sustaining this drainage is to condition the human resource so that they comply with the status quo and elites of the affected countries are actively facilitate the process of pauperization. That conditioning is induced through both overt and covert indoctrination through mainstream media and schooling which is either directly controlled or heavily influenced by financial power of the West and their church. This also explains why history of India by design has been distorted. Prime Minister Modi, unlike his domesticated and docile predecessors, has made blunt statement to this effect. Let us take a listen to the statement of Mr. Modi. देश का जो इतिहास लिखा गया उसमें इतिहास के कुछ अहम पक्षों को नजरअंदाज कर दिया गया साथियों गुरुदेव टैगोर ने 1903 के अपने एक लेख में जो लिखा था मैं इसका जिक्र आज बंगाल की इस पवित्र धरती पे जरूर करना चाहूंगा गुरुदेव ने लिखा था भारत का इतिहास वो नहीं है जो हम परीक्षाओं के लिए पढ़ते और याद करते हैं कुछ लोग बाहर से आए पिता बेटे की हत्या करता रहा भाई भाई को मारता रहा सिंहासन के लिए संघर्ष होता रहा यह भारत का इतिहास नहीं है मैं नहीं कह रहा हूं मैं गुरुदेव की बात सिर्फ पढ़ रहा हूं साथियों गुरुदेव ने इस बात का ध्यान दिलाया था कि इतिहासकारों ने उस तूफान को घर के बाहर से ही देखा जो लोग उस तूफान से निपट रहे थे वो इतिहासकार उनके घर में गए ही नहीं अब जो बाहर से देखेगा वो तो सिर्फ तूफान ही देख पाएगा ना उस तूफान से तब वहां के समाज ने वहां के सामान्य मानवी ने कैसे मुकाबला किया इस पर इतिहासकारों की नजर ही नहीं पड़ी ये गुरुदेव कह के गए हैं मस्ट बी साइकोलॉजिकली कंडीशन टू थिंक दैट द विक्टर इज क्वालिटेटिवली बाय फार सुपीरियर वन वे टू इंडोक्ट्रिनेट is to constantly bombard false narratives of repeated defeat and discard and falsify glorious and victorious phase, phases of history of the vanquished at every step of their social life starting from primary school onwards such conditioning effectively demoralizes and erodes 
all instinct of resistance and competition with victors. This explains why school history lessons are littered with events of only India's political setbacks. This strategy has effectively demoralized and degraded self-respect of Indian elites to say nothing about the underclass. Fact that urban culture of India is nauseatingly slavish imitation and caricature of Western way of life is rooted into the chronic inferiority complex of the ruling class. Exactly the same complex is visible in the urban life of French and British colonies of West and East Africa. Perhaps it is pertinent to recall here that soon after being elected as Congress president in 1939, Subhash Chandra Bose proposed to introduce steps for effective education and cultural conditioning to restore corroded sense of national pride and self-respect of masses resulting from prolonged British domination. Fact that India and South Asia, despite being colonized and marginalized, exist to this day is testimony to the fact that India must have been successful in confronting some of the lethal invaders, including the British. Here are some hidden historical personalities who defeated invaders, including British, that might explain why Indian masses are still alive and kicking, despite their ruling class being metamorphosed into contemptible clowns through heavy conditioning with Western propaganda and false narrative. Here are some of the glorious historical personalities who conquered foreign invaders, including British, who are culled from events of Indian history, lest public become conscious of the, of the teaching of Vivekananda, who declared, you are a lion cub. Why do you wrap yourself in lamb skin and act like one? Wake up. Here are the list. In January 1849, British and Sikh Battle of Chilianwala in undivided Punjab, currently Mandi Bahauddin in Pakistan. At Chilianwala, a British army fought against Sikh, Sikh commander Sardar Sher Singh Attariwala after both armies had faced each other for the three days without renewing the action, both withdrew. Sher Singh continued northwards to join Chattar Singh, which made the battle into a strategic British defeat. October 1824, Kittur, armed rebellion under the leadership of Queen Kittur Rani Chinnamma and her army chief Sangoli Rayana. During the first round of the war, British suffered heavy losses. Two British officers were taken hostage but were released by the Queen with the understanding that the war would end. British betrayed and second assault initiated, which ended up with the defeat of the Queen. Sangoli continued with guerrilla fight, but ultimately his uncle betrayed him and helped British to catch the chief that led to his death by hanging. 1805, Joshua Rao Holkar of Maratha Empire. He defeated the British army led by Colonel Fawcett at Kunch in Bundelkhand, as well as attacked Delhi to free the Mughal Empire Shah Alam II. This battle lasted for a week. Maharaja Jashavantra Holkar was bestowed the title of Maharaja Diraj Raj Rajeshwar Alija Bahadur as a token of admiration by Mughal Emperor Shah Alam for his bravery. In the year 1779, at the Battle of Wadagan Mahadji, Sindhe defeated the British, luring them to Kandalaghat. The memory of the shameful English defeat was cleverly obliterated and replaced by the myth of a brave Englishman who single-handedly fought against hordes of natives. It needs no reputation to say that colonial 
historiography was a major propaganda weapon in the hands of the British to brainwash Indians and make them accept the superiority of the English race. This is exactly what is happening today through education system and media conditioning. September 1780 to 1784, Battle of Pallilur near the city of Kanchipuram in Tamil Nadu, Second Anglo-Mysore War, Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan defeated British. Tipu prevented Lieutenant Colonel Bailey from joining his detached force consisting of two companies of European infantry, two batteries of artillery and five battalions of native infantry from Guntur joining Hector Munro at Kanchipuram while Tipu's father Hyder Ali continued the siege at Arcot. Of the 3,853 men under Bailey was taken to Sri Rangapatnam near Mysore in the present-day Karnatak state. August 1669 to July 1729, Kanhoji or Sarkel Angre, Admiral Equivalent in Maratha Navy, defeated British naval fleet between 1702 and 1729. He raided and defeated British pirates and ships of East India Company at least 12 times. Portuguese and Dutch pirate ships at least three to five times. August 18, 1700 to April 28, 1740, Baji and Ballal Prime Minister Peshwa of Maratha Empire fought 41 battles, never lost a single one. 1755 to 1768, Maharaj Surajmal Singh and his son, Jawahar Singh from Kingdom of Jat community captured Agra Fort on 12th of June 1761 and it remained in the possession of Bharatpur rulers till 1774 during Mughal era. Bharatpur was only independent state of India during British rule. Bharatpur defeated the British army 13 times in a row whenever British attacked Bharatpur. Victoria Queen herself signed a treaty favoring Jats with Bharatpur and recognized the power of Jats and declared Bharatpur a independent nation of Jats. 1715 to 1767, Puli Thevar, ruler of Tirunelveli of Tamil Nadu. Puli Thevar was the earlier freedom fighter in our Indian history. He was a Tamil Palayakarar who ruled Nerkatumseval in the Sankaran Koli Taluk. Tiruna Veli. His real name, Kathapaluthevar. He was elected as a king in his twelfth year. He refused all demands of Britishers. So Pulli Thevar got a support of Travancore Maharaja Mara Matanda Varma. Maharaja accepted his request and sent 4,000 troops to Pulli Thevar, who fought and defeated the British. 1706 to 1758. Anizam Tirunal Matanda Varma known as maker of modern Trivancore, was ruler of the Indian kingdom of Trivancore. Matanda Varma defeated the Dutch forces at the Battle of Kolachel in 1741. He then adopted a European mode of discipline for his army and expanded his kingdom northward to what became the modern state of Trivancore. 1671, Lachit Barfukan, a general, was a commander and Borfukan in the Ahom Kingdom, located in the present-day Assam, India. Known for his leadership in the 1671 Battle of Saraighat that thwarted a drawn-out attempt by Mughal forces under the command of Ram Singh to take over Ahom Kingdom. He died about a year later due to illness. The final battle was fought in early 1671 when the Mughals made a desperate attempt to break through. 1034 AD Suhal Dev or Suhail Dev is a legendary Indian king from Sravasti. That was a city of ancient India and one of the sixth largest cities in India during Gautam Buddha lifetime. The city was located in the fertile Gangetic plain in the present-day district of the same name, Sravasti, that belongs to Devi Devi Patan division of Uttar, Uttar Pradesh. 
near Balarampur, some 175 kilometers, that is 109 miles northeast of Lucknow. Suhaldev was popularly known to have defeated and killed the nephew of Muhammad of Ghazni, Ghaznavid General Ghazi Salar Masood, at the Battle of Baharaich in 1034 CE. Masood inflicted defeat after defeat on his enemies until the arrival of Suhaldev. Suhaldev's army defeated Masood's forces and Masood was killed in a battle at Baharaich on 15 June 1033. After that, no invaders dared to India for 140 years. These are some of the historical facts not publicly discussed or included in school curriculum. But why? As explained in the beginning, lest public become conscious of the teaching of Vivekananda who declared, you are a lion cub. Why do you wrap yourself in lambskin and act like one? Wake up!